Is good for video? Yeah. I mean, I'm a lot taller than I am. There we go. All right. Well, hi, Mandy. Hey, What's Dr. Up? Casey. Not much. How yeah. are you today? I'm awesome. Well, great. What are we doing here today? We are getting to know each other, even though we already know each other. But no, Mandy's been awesome. She's been a, a great friend of ours, and she's come on board to help us out on a couple different occasions. And now she has baby number two. Yep. She is back on board and helping us out in ways too. So uh, today we're going to go over a couple of things that Mandy wants to interview me about. So oh yes, you should be nervous about these questions. We're going to be professional, Ish. As friends. Ish. Ish. So, Dr. Casey, tell me about how. What made you get into chiropractic practice? So that was not an easy one for me. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that that's not, I, I wasn't born and found out that I wanted to get into chiropractic. Uh, that was an unrevolving story that just every year that went by, things kind of just pushed me into that direction. But starting off, I was just like, I was going to be Nick Saban before Nick Saban was Nick Saban. Oh, of course. I was going to win all the national championships. And then I realized that coaches get fired for not winning a national championship every single year. Yeah, that could hurt your career. Yeah. So I said, you know what? We might need to change things up and say we need to get something a little more stable. So at that point, I was like, I don't know what the heck that means. So graduating was a big deal. So I had to get out of college. And so I was like, let's finish the diploma. What else do I like to do? And I said, well, athletes, um, you know, football, you know. Well, you I actually was, were an athlete. Yeah, I played at West Georgia. And that's kind of what led into the next step was like, I got injured. And so part of, you know, dealing with a grade three separation shoulder, I had to go through stuff with the athletic trainers. So when I was at that transition of like what to do next, I said, well, hey, maybe let's uh, see what this whole athletic training thing is about. So I got really good at taping ankles and <laughs> throwing ice bags on things. And um, kind of after that, it was, um, I started to see other types of, um, healthcare providers involved in athletics and one of the that the uh, the guys that were there with the trainers regularly was a physical therapist and I kind of got to see how this guy didn't work nearly as hard and seemed to have made more money and I was like huh maybe when you look into physical therapy and it still gave me all the same things I was able to work with athletes and help them through injuries and um, get them back to the field as fast as we possibly could. So I actually started doing a lot of my physical therapy rounds and was actually, after about a year and a year and a half of doing that, I was saying, okay, it's time to apply. We could put our, we were about to put our application in and I just asked a couple of different questions. Uh, and I said, you know, do I want to go through all this school and all this debt? And then why is it that physical therapists required a um, prescription from medical providers in order to see patients. And I, was, and I just couldn't justify going through all of that and then saying, hey. We have to have somebody else's help. Now it's like, well, why did I go to doctor school and then not be able to you know, take in patients? You know, So I was like, I, I, was, I, was, I was kind of like a, an ends meet, if you will. And so my dad's a medical physician and I talked to him. I was like, well, dad, you know, you know where do we go? Like, wh what's next? You know, Cause I'm kind of at a roadblock on this. And he goes, well, you got, if you, if you want to stay down this pipeline, you got two options. You can either do what I do, which is being a medical physician or you can go to chiropractic school. And I was like, well, what's chiropractic? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> At that point in time, I didn't even know. I played for um, you know, a little league baseball team back in uh, you know, Pinto days, and that's all I knew about chiropractic. So I didn't know jack squad. And so I said, Dad, you know, well, do you know any chiropractors? Said, yeah, I got a couple of buddies here in town, and they were real reputable chiropractors. So I shouted those guys for a little bit. First day into their practices, I didn't have a clue like what happened, but I knew that was exactly what I wanted to be a part of yeah. because the energy of the practice, you know, the patients that were coming in, they, they didn't have long wait times. Uh, they weren't real sick, real depressed. Um, they were just coming in real upbeat and real positive and real quick treatments. And I didn't understand how all of it worked, but I knew that that's exactly what I was looking for. And so I got into chiropractic school. Awesome. And then now we're here. Where did you go to school for? That. So I went to Life University. Uh -huh. It's uh, and when you study all the chiropractic schools, Life University is probably one of the most popular ones worldwide to go to, and it's located in Atlanta, Georgia. And even though it's in the heart of the South, it is not um, very popular amongst Southerners. We were the minority. Oh, really? <laughs> worldwide. So you got people from South Africa, Korea, um, you know, all worldwide, but then also nationally, you have people coming from New York, California, uh, Florida. I mean, just from all over. And so. 
That's really cool. All of us Alabama folks sought each other out well, <laughs> pretty well, quick. Then you have got like that diversity too. That's right. right. So you made lots of That's colors. right. Yep, yep. I know chiropractors all around the world now, so if it's not me, I can help you to the right one. Oh, and I know that for a fact <laughs> because there's patients that come in or if they move or if they're going on a vacation, they'll just call up Dr. Casey and he'll be like, oh, I know, that's uh, Susie down there. That'll that's right. fix you right up. Costa Rica, I got your guy. Well, so why did you choose <laughs> Birmingham instead of Costa Rica? Well, uh, my wife to be and I, we didn't know each other when I was in chiropractic school or even coming out of chiropractic school until I'd already um, had a couple of businesses. And I'm from Anniston, so I had a practice there and I had taken over a practice over in Clay County. And so once I opened up my Anniston or Oxford practice, um, that's when I met my wife to be. And I didn't have that in the plans of saying, hey, let's do practice here forever. And then I was gonna have a wife and family and everything else. So when we got serious about the future relationship, we said, well, where do we really want to be and where do we want to anchor our roots with our practice? Um, because being in, in uh, Calhoun County, we just, we did our life there for almost 25, 30 years. We wanted to kind of have our extended life somewhere else. So we looked at a couple places and Atlanta was at the option there too, at the top of the list. But then my wife's family is more closer to the Birmingham side. And when we were talking family and wanting to have kids, it was one of those things that we said, well, you know what, it might be best if we kind of stick closer to where family is instead of having to come, you know, hauling all the way from wherever we wanted to be, whether it was Nashville or Atlanta or wherever. Makes sense. So Birmingham just felt at home when we came here and visited right here in Bluff Park. They treat us like family. It seems like to be like our it's own It's a town. really good community. Yep. Like it's a close knit yep. community. Yep. I mean, I honestly, like, uh, we walk into Mr. P's, uh, I, they know us by first name. They treat us like we're family. So. I mean, we love this area. We wouldn't imagine being anywhere else. I love this facility. Yep. I yep. bet you got so excited when you first walked in. You like visualized how you were going to Oh, it, that up. part wasn't exciting. <laughs> we actually had uh, another facility next door that was um, granted to us. And my wife and I were going to Costa Rica for our honeymoon. And uh, we had our thought we had a contract ready to go and, you know, just a little paint on the wall. And then we came back from our honeymoon and... That deals off the table, but we had these other two facilities. So I walked into it, and you know, and it, it wasn't as exciting as you make it out to be. Uh, but I definitely uh, sat in here in the dark and visualized and said, "All right, how? What do we got to do to make it work?" And so here we are. We, You're such we, a go getter. I can't imagine you out. just sitting here and being like, "I'm not going to do that." I'm no, I didn't have candles and all that other stuff set up. I was literally uh, just sat in here and just kind of like. Mapped it out, walked it out, sat in here and said, okay, you know, does this work? Can this work? And he did most yeah. of the work here himself. Yeah. I had some help, you know, but there was a lot of sweat equity. I was impressed. <laughs> when you told me about, about the counters and the doors, I was yeah. like, whoa. Well, I, you know, I, my mom got a paintbrush in her hand, That's you know, right. so, you know, my niece was here a little bit too, but there was a lot of sweat equity put into it. So that's the good thing about being in Birmingham and they're just right there. Yeah. I'm like, hey, could, uh, yeah. could you guys come over here? I know y'all are busy, so. I mean, paintbrush that's me. right. That's right. That's awesome. So you mentioned your personal injuries whenever you were playing football. Yep. And that encouraged you to look into <clears throat> physical therapy. So you skipped physical therapy, went to chiropractic school. Yep. yep. And do you do you heal yourself or do you treat yourself? Uh, what are some, there's some tricks or some tips that you can give other people. So uh, you know, I have uh, you know very limited things that I can you know treat myself from a chiropractic standpoint um, to myself. You know, I, I have other chiropractors that are very reputable around town. Um, even my dad, who's a, a DO, an osteopathic physician, you know, he does a lot of the manual manipulations and kind of, you know, what intrigued me to even pursue chiropractic as well. So there's very limited that I can do from a chiropractic standpoint myself, but to stay healthy and keep things moving and muscles slide and glide like they're supposed to and keep inflammation down. Yeah. I mean, you know, I work out regularly, you know, at one point in time, I just had to look at myself in the mirror and say, look, if you don't take care of number one, you're not going to be able to take care of your family. You're not going to be able to take care of all your patients. You're not going to be able to, you know, grow a lifelong business here, you know, and be a part of it because you'll blow out a shoulder, you'll blow out a hip. And what you do and, is very physical. Yeah, it, yeah, it can be. Yeah, for a lot of times it can be like when we take care of kiddos. No, it's not. Um, and then when we have like some older patients that come in that may have like osteoporosis. No, not so much. Yeah. But you know, for a lot of people that have been through injuries like I have been and need more of the physical manual manipulations, yeah, it's, it's tough on me to do, especially when you're seeing 20, 30 patients a day, and then we're growing into seeing more patients. So. And you see all kinds of patients, yep. like athletes to kids. Yeah. Which would you say your favorite? 
would be. Oh man, they're all. I don't know that there's a single most favorite because they they all have different levels of joy that are all equal. And I can say I love you know like one of the first things when we have kids come in, mm -hmm. especially like our little toddlers that know just well enough that they're going to the doctor's office. And typically, when they go to the doc's office, they you know they're shots. getting they're getting you know finger pricked, they're getting blood drawn, they're getting shots. It's not a pleasant experience. And so then when I come into play, you know it's like they think that I'm going to do the same thing. And uh, but maybe they're going through some ear infection issues. Maybe they're going uh, through colic issues. Maybe it's constipation. That first visit, they were real timid, and then you see that, you know, you got to fight them to get them on the table. They're crying a little bit, and then they start getting adjusted, which you can probably testify to this. Mm -hmm. And after that first adjustment, they go, well, one, that didn't hurt. This doctor doesn't hurt. And holy cow, like, my ear, even though they, they don't know what's going on with their ear other than it hurts, they know that their ear infections are starting to get better. Right. So. I see Dr. Casey, I have two little girls, and he adjusts my girls. When my oldest was three, she's five now. She was three, she had constipation. I had taken her to the pediatrician's office twice and like within two weeks, nothing. And I brought her up here to see Dr. Casey and she was in the bathroom before we left. Yep, yep. And then she just got adjusted last week for her ear infection. It's, yep. it's fine. It's pretty, fine. pretty common if, if you battle constipation and we get a, a, an adjustment in, pretty much you might have to run to the bathroom. So just, you know, be near that if you have if you come in with that. I'm just amazed that he can do all these things, like just these tweaks and these adjustments, can make such a benefit on someone's well being. Yeah. Like, why don't they tell you that when you're at the doctor's office, like at the physician? You know, there, there's probably a lot of reasons that we can really dive into. Honestly, I just think it's a lack of awareness of right. what chiropractic brings to the table. Well, I was um, unaware. Uh, for if you if you sit around and watch TV or. You know, we watch a lot of the advertising that's traditionally done from uh, maybe radio or um, TV, newspaper. Things that grab people's attention is pain-related conditions. So like neck pain, back pain, headaches. I mean, that's usually at the top of the list. That's what you're thinking about. The next things are, you know, things that are maybe related to other joints like knee pain, hip pain, you know, tendonitis, like diagnosis. People have problems with those things and chiropractic is very effective also to help you out of those conditions. But that's what draws people's attention, and then it's just overdone and, and, and you know, run down people's throats. So there's a misconception that all we are is back pain, neck pain, headache doctors, when there's a lot of other types of conditions that are going on. And, and ultimately, it's just like, look, we're just to maintain spinal health. And if you get good spinal health, everything that's connected to it will perform better. As long as we don't have too many years of degenerative issues and injuries that are left untreated, and you're facing you know, surgical components, Many times we've been able to keep people away from the knife and further medical you know, uh, procedures that may have been unnecessary had we done a lot of this chiropractic component. But that's not taught in uh, medical school and it's just a lack of awareness. So I like to pride myself on you know, making sure that when we talk to other medical physicians or we have patients that come in that have been either referred from their medical physicians that we, we, we not just, you know, we absolutely go through the full gamut of saying, hey, this is what we do in our clinic. You know, we're not just back pain, neck pain, headache doctors, but this is why that's very effective for those things. I think one of my favorite, not one, but my favorite thing to see with your current patients or past patients that come in is to hear the stories of how, oh, I was like scheduled for surgery yeah. a week, and yeah. then I came to saw Dr. Casey, and I completely avoided the knife. Like, that's just, it's amazing yeah. to me. Uh, just right off hand, I got a patient in mind that, um, you know, his story is just absolutely phenomenal. For over a six year period of time, you know, he had almost uh, 36 or 37 injections because of how much neck pain and degenerative issues he was having. And yeah, you know, he, he's like, man, I just don't want to have surgery, um, but also really don't want to do chiropractic care because I've already done that and it kind of made it worse. But he sought us out because we do acupuncture. And when we talked to him, I said, well, look, you know, there's probably a structural thing that needs to be addressed through chiropractic from, from what I've seen from your x-rays and MRIs. But there's also an acupuncture component that I think that would be highly beneficial too. And over the, I don't know, the past two and a half, three years since he's been here, now he's only had one injection over that period of time versus over the previous six years where he had almost 40. That's insane. So, and now he's kind of up for another shot and he's trying to do his best to avoid it. And I was like, well, look, man, if you stay out from underneath your car trying to do car mechanic stuff and let this thing get better, we might be able to avoid it. That's right. Even though he's still doing it and kind of making it worse. 
he's still getting better and maybe avoiding that procedure too. I so. think that'll be so yep. awesome. I'm, I'm excited yep. to see, not excited, but I'm looking forward to seeing if he um, yeah. avoids that needle again. Well, he'll have to stay out from underneath the boat. Yeah, I gotta get that exhaust. Get, get, get things get. happy and healthy first, and then you maybe get back into it. Goodness. When I, when I asked him how he was feeling since his last visit, he was like, I don't wanna tell you. Yep. <laughs> okay. So whenever your patients come in, like yep. I, I hear you talk a lot, and you know so much. And even myself, like, I'll ask you a question, and you don't just know the answer to it. You know how that answer came about and how that answer came about. And, like, you're, you're literally like a walking Google machine. Whew. Where did you get that from? I'm not the best studier. <laughs> like, <laughs> academics is not my um, – there's some people that can just see it once, hear it once, and they got it, and they got a 98 or 99 or 100 on their test. You know, I require a little bit more work to break down how things, okay, I get how you're scientifically saying this and I know how to get that answer on the test, but how do you take this and make it make sense to me to do what I need to do really well? And then how do you make sense to the patient to make it understand that it's like, hey, well, here's your test answer, but how, like, I want to be eye to eye to my patient. So when I'm studying everything, I'm like, how do you get this point across the patient? And I just basically wanted to make sure that, you know, when patients come to see me, they said, oh, I've never heard it explained that well before. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard that. Like, I've heard people say that, like, oh, well, now that makes yeah. sense. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, one of the top things that I think because of the way that we explain it down and break it down for patients is that they have a, now a, a real comprehension of what's going on. And they go, well, how come nobody else ever told us that before? And a lot of times I just really think that's purely and simply because it's a lack of awareness. It, you don't know what you don't know. And we're trying to help, you know, from our patient base first, and then our community second, is help understand that and raise awareness about what it is that we do at Birmingham Health, mm -hmm. why it's effective, and why it needs to be regularly a part of your lifestyle. And there's patients that don't believe me at first, and that's okay. You know, I'm here to help when they're ready for the help. And we've had a lot of patients come back in after a period of time saying, I got off track and I know it. And I'm not going to shame you. I don't snap them on the wrist too hard. We, we love you. We love you back in here. And um, we get back to, you know, getting you bounced back into a great direction that helps you meet your goals so you can live the healthiest lifestyle that you want to live. So the maintenance is a very big component in wellness. If you think about it like this, um, let's say we're trying to get on Muscle Fitness Magazine. Yeah, and we I'm did, super and, close. And we did, I'm right behind you. <laughs> we did the work. And I mean, we did all the exercising. We did all the dieting. You know, you, you got up and made sure that, you know, you could go to the gym and get all your work stuff done. And, you know, one to two or three years go by, Muscle Fitness Magazine calls you up. You're shredding and you're the highest selling magazine cover ever. And then you're like, all right, goal number one done. Next. Donuts, pizzas, hot dogs, and colas. Come on, bring it my way. Oh, that'd be me. Do you think that you're going to maintain those same results and that same energy levels? No, you're not. And so when we talk about a wellness lifestyle, there's so much that happens to us. Not just, you know, people think, well, I didn't do anything. How in the world did I get this way? And I'm like, you don't have to have painted your house or laid sod in your yard or was in a car accident or... Played some parkour. Yeah, you know. No, you didn't have to put your body through something in order for things to wreak havoc in your body. Many a times it's like, what kind of stress was loaded on your plate? Mm -hmm. And how do you internalize that stress and what does it manifest to physically? I, you've seen me and know me long enough and we get curveballs thrown at us all the time. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's very important for me, yeah, to maintain getting adjusted because of stuff that just happens to me, not necessarily what did I put my body through. So yeah, I maintain adjustments for myself so I can keep doing what I'm doing for everybody else here. So yeah, it's very important to maintain adjustments. And what that is, everybody's goals are different. Some people see us less often, some people see, some people see us more often because if their body's not moving well and doing well, they can't work, they can't put food on the table, they can't right. pay their bills. So it's more important for them to make sure that their body's functioning at a high capacity so that they can do the work that their family needs them to do. So everybody's goals are different. Makes sense to me. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Now, when you get a, an adjustment, I know me personally, mm -hmm. you've explained this to me so many times, but you're 
each patient reacts a little differently. My reaction is I suddenly get super hot. Yeah. And I know that you said that was the, the fight or flight. Yeah. Am I fighting or am I flighting? <laughs> so, you know, I guess you have the gigglers. Some people laugh and giggle when they get adjusted. They get surprised that you're yeah. here. You got some people that call me all the, the names in the Bible. Yeah. And you got some people that just go into full-blown, you know, sweat mode. And yeah, you know, there is a reaction to what happens when we actually do an alignment, especially for some area that's been really just locked up and rusted for a period of time and never really been addressed. And then you finally start to address it. Yes, they can throw your body into full blown sympathetic mode. Like if a tiger jumped out and scared you. Sympathetic mode. Right. Yep. Heartbeat goes flying through the roof. Sweat. Yeah, we're going to break out into a sweat. I think we've all kind of been in that scary moment, and that's one of the things that can happen sometimes when we have an adjustment. But that's not everybody. It depends on what they're coming in with. What happens to you when you get adjusted? Uh, automatic relief. Yeah? You know, just, I don't break out into sweat, um, but, you know, I know long enough for my injuries, my recurring areas, that I'm like, okay, I got a good adjustment in, and I just know it's like, okay, that's going to last until the next curveball is thrown to me. I mean, <laughs> I feel automatic relief when it happens. Like, I... I literally yeah. run around but i'm just you know, sporting a sweat stash you know i mean i think like if i want to break down step by step what happens you know many times i feel like blood flow is rushing you know back to my head yeah you know it's just like things that are just locked up it's not getting you know the circulation it's not getting the nerve flow that it needs to and so for me like i can just feel not just relief to where it might there might be something stiff or tight but sometimes it's like i feel like my eyes work better because it's getting all that circulation back to it mm -hmm. right you know, sometimes if you have muffled ears, I don't know if you've ever experienced that too, like people will tell me all the time that their sinuses are draining or that decreased pressure occurs. You know, so I mean, time to time, is, it, it can be a little bit of this or a little bit of that, but for the most part, it's just like, you move better, you feel better. For me, you know, I'll know that I'm gonna get a way better sleep that night too, because it's just taking all that physical stress that's there and relaxing that stress on something that's real sensitive, right? Spinal yeah. cord's kind of important. A little bit. So you take pressure off of that area in spinal nerves. It's just like it just relaxes the brain, allows some balance to happen. So for me, I actually get better sleep. When I'm in a regular sleep cycle, I just know that it's time to get adjusted again. It's not so necessarily because something feels kinked up or messed up. Yeah. So. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, you raised a good point. Like this season that we're in, it's a good time to get some maintenance work done. Stress is big right now. Well, just the stress and like allergies and, oh, yeah. you know, anytime... Yeah. If you cough, people assume you have COVID now. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you're feeling a little stopped up, I think an adjustment's a good answer. It helps. It's a puzzle piece. I'm not a doctor, but... <laughs> it's a puzzle piece, though. But I work with one. There we go. What else we got? Is that all of them? I think that's about it. Um, is there anything else you'd like to yeah. add? This uh, is our first podcast. We are just way. opening up our podcast. Um, so, we'll be doing a lot of different things in the clinic. Um, you'll be hearing from some of our other employees. Uh, we'll also be hearing some from some of our professionals that we reach out to and refer to. You may just see some of our neighborhood friends that you know may or may not even be a patient here, um, but we'll be making this a fun thing to follow. So yeah. tune in, and, and we if, hope to make it exciting. If you have any questions that you yeah. want Dr. Casey to answer, yeah. just give us a message, and I'll add it to the list. It can be anything about chiropractic or acupuncture. It doesn't have to be anything about uh, Birmingham Health. It, it could be personal. Yep. Yeah, so. Make it fun. Bring it to us. We'd love to help and be a part of engaging this uh, podcast with everybody, too.